end of a fabulous football year. A shutout victory in the Gator Bowl, concluding the most successful season in two decades. Maryland football back at the top again. Amen. The Villanova Wildcats were first on the Terrapin schedule for 1975, and it didn't take long for the Terrapins to get into gear. Less than five minutes into the new season, sophomore quarterback Mark Mangus hit smooth striding Tim Wilson on this 25-yard scoring strike. A devastating block by Kim Hoover helped pave the way. En route to tying school records for touchdown tosses, Mangus picks out tight end Vince Kinney the next time Maryland gets the ball. The result, this 46-yard touchdown romp. This was a big day for the big play. Early in the third quarter, Mangus selected John Schultz as his target, and the chunky senior wing back registers his second touchdown for the afternoon, gathering in this bomb to complete a 38-yard play. Then in the fourth period, Larry Dick, the other sophomore quarterback sensation, spotted Chuck White downfield. 70 yards later, it was touchdown number six, capping off a 41 to nothing opening day win. Next up, the Orange of Tennessee at Knoxville, with more than 75,000 rabid volunteer fans looking in. Maryland set a strong defensive tone early. Linebacker Brad Carr nails Val quarterback Gary Roach for a 13-yard loss. Massive Joe Campbell registers Maryland's first points when he tackles the volunteer punter in the Tennessee end zone. Then trailing in the third period, the Terrapins reach into their offensive bag and come up with this gem. Mark Mangus hands off to John Schultz. Schultz back to Mangus. The maneuver puts the Terrapins in good field position. They gain 33 yards, but they lose a quarterback. Mangus suffers a shoulder separation that puts him out of action until November. Larry Dick spells Mangus again and sends this three-yard strike to Kim Hoover, but it's too little, too late. The Terrapins lose to the balls in game number two. Chapel Hill welcomes the Terrapins for game number three. North Carolina coming off a strong start, and the Tar Heels hope to upset the conference king. Carolina takes an early lead, and then comes the big strike, a 1975 hallmark. John Schultz, on his way to becoming the national leader in kickoff returns, takes the ball off the Tar Heel toe and sprints over 90 yards to set up a score. Watch the blocking as Schultz maneuvers into the open. Only a last-ditch dive saves the touchdown, but Schultz's brilliant gallop sets up an eventual scoring avalanche. One of Jerry Claiborne's prides is his flexible physical defense. Here, tackle Ralph Fisher reads pass, and the big senior defensive tackler regains 19 yards with this intercepted Tar Heel toss. Early in the second half, the Teals threaten again, but cornerback Kenny Roy interrupts the Carolina threat with this timely interception. Senior tailback Jamie Franklin keeps Maryland's drive going with his 16-yard spurt over a right side seam. Then Larry Dick spots Kim Hoover, and this 49-yard pass and run puts the game beyond Carolina's reach. Kim Hoover's senior season climaxed a lustrous career for the Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio honor student who combines brightness on the field with brilliance in the classroom. Hoover is the prime example of how you combine each part. I think the biggest asset of the athletic program at Maryland is Coach Claiborne himself in that he makes it possible to be a student athlete. I think a lot of the big programs around the country, uh, you're an athlete student or just an athlete. He's shown that it's, it's possible to have fun and still win games. He's dead serious, and no one works harder than he does. And I think that's a big contribution where the players know no matter what the coaches ask of them that they're putting in more time than we are. As far as the athletic program at Maryland as a whole, uh, I think it's done a lot for the school. And that now we have a nationally ranked basketball team, nationally ranked football team. And that does a lot for student morale. When we came here, the program was nothing. Our first year as freshmen, we broke even 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. I think our main legacy is that we've won our three varsity seasons. We've been won at least eight games. And that gives you something to build on. The Terrapins are back on the road and back again in the Southeastern Conference. Game number four features the University of Kentucky in Lexington. 
After Kentucky drives for an early score, the Terrapins kick off lightning strikes again. This time, it's Ricky Jennings' turn. The gifted climax runner from Washington cradles that kickoff on his seven-yard line. Jennings gets some spectacular blocking, and by the time he reaches midfield, Ricky's on his way. 93 yards for a touchdown. Late in the first stanza, Maryland begins another drive with his 15-yard flip to Kim Hoover from lanky Larry Dick. Eight plays later, the drive pays off with Mike Suchko's 30-yard field goal. Here's a good look at the Terrapin defense. On successive plays, the Terrapins toss the Kentucky quarterback for losses. First, a six-yard deficit as linebacker Kevin Benson makes his play. Then, inside defensive guards Ernie Sally and Paul DeVito tee off on a bruising seven-yard sack. But game number four ends in a 10-all tie. The Syracuse Orange Men fly into College Park on a magnificent autumn afternoon for game number five. The rapidly improving Orange feature a new look and an impressive early season record. Maryland fullback Tim Wilson sets the Terrapin offense into motion with his strong 20-yard gallop up the middle to open play. And when Syracuse has the ball, Leroy Hughes, all-conference defensive end, chases down the Syracuse signal caller for an 11-yard loss. So the Orange changes its quarterbacks, but not its luck. Terrapin defensive tackle Russ Lahane stops the quarterback 10 yards behind the line. There's another budding star at Maryland, powerful tailback Steve Atkins, a 225-pound bruiser who goes 12 yards in this payoff and an easy Terrapin win. Now it's North Carolina State's turn to try to dethrone the defending conference champion. The Wolfpack was the last conference team to beat the Terrapins, but that was two years ago. After a 96-yard kickoff return puts Maryland ahead, Steve Atkins does the bulwark on a subsequent 43-yard drive, first for 11 yards. And then it's Atkins versus the Wolfpack on this final punch. In the third period, the highly volatile Wolfpack offense moves 60 yards in its way to an apparent score. But on consecutive plays, defensive home runs pay off. First, this 12-yard loss engineered by Ernie Sally. Then Joe Campbell echoes the move with a 10-yard quarterback sack. In the fourth quarter, Bucky finds the going tough again. Ernie Sally is unseen but not unfelt with this six-yard drop. Then in one of the great plays of the day, defensive end Billy Evans plays pass beautifully, intercepts while falling down. Final score 37-22, Maryland still the conference leader. Sophomore quarterback Larry Dick boasts an unusual football record. In high school, the six foot three inch slinger never lost a game in which he started. Here's the way Dick sets up. I was recruited by several schools, and what it basically came down to was I wanted to play for a winning program, which obviously I saw Maryland was turned around and was going to be a winning program. excellent coaching staff. They teach us well, teach us the fundamentals, and uh, Coach Claiborne sees to us that they do that. And he's an excellent head coach. I look forward to winning the national championship, and I think we can do that here, and I think with an undefeated season, everything else will come, you know, and you'll see rewards for the players and, you know, the national recognition, whatever. Maryland uh, basically has a good reputation, both academically and athletically right now. I meet several people in the offseason, and they seem to have favorable thoughts about Maryland. So it just seems like, you know, after this year, I've met a few who respond favorably because I went to Maryland, and I'm sure they'll continue that way. The 
There's no question that again in 1975, the tremendous enthusiasm of the Maryland team and the coaching staff set the tone for Maryland's retaining the Atlantic Coast Conference title. That enthusiasm plus hard work was to pay off in the best record in 20 years. Physician Stan Levine ensures Maryland athletes getting the finest medical attention in the country. Levine was a record-setting quarterback at Maryland and now serves as medical consultant to the Washington Bullets and Washington Redskins, as well as his favorite Terrapin team. Well, we're pretty well set up here in that we have everything that's necessary to rehabilitate an injured athlete. By that, I mean we have an extensive weight room. So if the fellow has an injury, he's able to build the strength back up in the injured extremity so that he can return to playing again. In addition, we have all the modalities that are necessary to get rid of soreness, inflammation, pain, tenderness. Some of those are whirlpool and ultrasound machines, uh, as well as teeth. Why, why are you taping it that way? So we can keep that medial straight. The most important part of treating an injury is trying to prevent it. And the way to prevent injuries consists primarily of having the athlete in as good condition as possible so that the extremity or the back or the neck, whatever it is that's prone to being injured, can be supported by good, strong muscles and therefore lessen the chance of an injury. How's your knee feel? Good. Good. Oh, good. Could you play today if you want? Yeah, back they need an athlete. We have a large training staff, the head trainer, has had a tremendous amount of experience. I believe he's been at it since about 1947. He is a member of the National Athletic Trainers Association, which means that he's been examined and uh, found qualified to serve in the post that he's in. Also, his assistants are extremely well trained in uh, recognizing the management and treatment of most of the injuries that they see. During the actual game, I have to be on the sideline, ready to run out on the field for any uh, injury that requires the presence of a physician immediately. And this especially includes injuries to the head and neck. Otherwise, the trainers go out on the field and evaluate the situation, and if it's relatively minor, they handle it. Otherwise, they beckon me out there and I go out and do whatever has to be done. In the old days, years ago, the physician might sit up in the stands, but the way the game's played now, each team has their own physician who is right there on the sideline. Against Wake Forest and Winston-Salem, Maryland's superb defense kept on hitting those big plays. Mike Miller stops the Deacons nine yards behind the line. And when the Terrapins needed a big play offensively, Ricky Jennings strutted for 32 yards and the night's longest gainer. Watch Ricky go. Moments later, Jennings rams through for six more yards and yet another tally. In this season of outstanding aerial artistry, quarterback Larry Dick's 47-yard shot to Kim Hoover was a stickout. November 1st, Penn State, Maryland, a furious, breathtaking battle with over 60,000 on hand to watch the East's best teams. Back in action after seven weeks of enforced idleness, Maryland quarterback Mark Mangus adds his slip-style running dimension to the rejuvenated Terrapin offense. In one of his best power blasts of the season, Steve Atkins butts for five yards and a score. Third quarter action. It's Mangus again, this time for a 13-yard gain right up the middle. But the ninth-rated Lions rescue a win on a 40-yard fourth-period field goal. After the Classic with Penn State, the Terrapins won on the road again against improved and surprising Cincinnati in Riverfront Stadium. For almost 40 minutes, the Terrapins were sluggish. Then in an explosive span of just 90 seconds, senior tailback Jamie Franklin turned the game around. This 29-yard touchdown sprint was the start. The very next time he handled the ball, it was Franklin again, this time from 32 yards away. Same play call, same result. Touchdown. 
In the fourth quarter, completing his superior day, Franklin went eight yards in this pass and run to register touchdown number three. A pretty good day's work. Then needing the big play defensively to preserve their win and prevent an upset, the Terrapins sack the Bearcat quarterback and win game number six. Bob Pellegrini was an All-American center and lineman of the year in 1955 on the Terrapins' superb Orange Bowl squad. Pellegrini, wearing number 50, was outstanding in every game in which he ever played. Now he's one of Maryland's staunchest supporters. He remembers the era in which he played, but he lavishes unqualified praise on this era's players and their coach. To compare him to the Tatum era and the Claiborne era, he had a lot of blue chippers. The coach team had a lot of blue chippers at the moment when I got there. But Jerry's getting to the point where he's getting them on a slower basis, but he's coming up to be close to the Tatum era. But he's not there yet, of course, because he needs the, you know, the, the program as an advance as far as Tatum is. The Phillies now are super here. Now, of course, uh, Maryland has the weight program, which we never use. I never lift a weight in my life. So I think Jerry's program has, that he's developing his players from the weight level better than most coaches ever have. He will, if the player has the ability, he'll get it out of them somehow, some way. Where Tatum had the players there with more polish than, than Coach Claiborne had. So Jerry's actually doing a hell of a job of coaching. But I think Maryland next year will be in the top 10. I think that uh, he's going in that direction. He's a very fine man and a great individual and he's a, he's a great leader. And uh, he's also building character in these boys that, that I think that Tatum didn't care about, but Claiborne does. Not that Tatum didn't really want to get involved, he just was so involved getting the program all up, he didn't go into the area where Jerry is, that Jerry's program is overall concerned. We don't have to, I'm not worried about a lot of chatter, but I want some electricity on this field today, some intensity, and great concentration that we're preparing to win this championship. Preparing to win that championship, let's go. For Jerry Claiborne, the road to success is composed of hard work, intense preparation, careful recruiting, and the ability to generate mutual respect and player enthusiasm. Four years ago, the Maryland task seemed formidable, but not impossible, as three consecutive bowl bids have now borne out. Well, I think our program now is, is just, you know, real close to being where we want it. It's not there yet. We still need a few more of those real blue chip athletes to where you can Big go out uh, week in and week out and Big play against uh, the best in the country. But a few more breaks, a few more football players, and you can and reach that height. Right right that's our goal, and we just got to keep working until we reach that goal. There'll be a man on top of you, Phil. And I'm telling you, look at it in the film. You just jump right in there and hit that quarterback. But I think you might be able to catch that draw. Once the player enrolls here, why? Well, First thing we try to impress upon is he's got to get his academic work. That's the number one reason he comes to the University of Maryland, or any other school should be, is to get his degree from that right university. There, that's, that's where you want to go, right there. Joe, you come right on. You come right on. You come right on, Joe. The main satisfaction that I think I get is, is the fact that they have gotten their degree. I think that's very important. And we constantly remind them of this, and we're constantly on them to try to get them to make sure they go to class and, and do their homework and do their academic work that comes first and football practice does not interfere with any of their classes if they have to have a class and report to practice late why well, they just have to report to practice late oh lord look out don't get me <laughs>
then you'll never do anything that you'll regret. Uh, this is our kind of our coaching philosophy. The Clemson Tigers picked to finish first, but struggling to stay out of the conference basement, hosted Maryland in game number 10, playing as though the title was at stake. After Clemson took an early lead, the Terrapins responded with what had become their super weapon. John Schultz grabs the Tiger kickoff, and from his eight-yard line, writes history with still another payoff dash. Schultz also caught three touchdown passes and threw for one himself in a brilliant campaign. But the kickoff return was his special hallmark this year. He led the country. In the second quarter, Tim Wilson adds 16 more yards to his impressive yearly total. Larry Dick dissected the Clemson secondary with this 32-yard shot to Kim Hoover. 24 hours later came the welcome invitation from Jacksonville. Come on down, Maryland. The Gator Bowl bid is yours. The regular season finale against Virginia staggers the mind. This pass to John Schultz, for example, accounts for 27 yards of the record 802 offensive yards amassed this day. 18 players shared in that performance, with no less than eight of them contributing to the 62-point avalanche. Here, Bob Reba adds 37 yards to his personal total. Ricky Jennings helps bid the home crowd goodbye with this 47-yard scamper. And finally, Steve Atkins' second touchdown of the day on an incredible, exhausting 60-yard sprint. A reminder of what the year has been and a foretaste of what's yet to come in the Gator Bowl. Roy Hughes, diminutive Terrapin all-conference defensive end, symbolizes the attitudes that account for Maryland's football resurgence. The dynamic Hughes enrolled as an offensive performer, transferred his talents to defense his sophomore season, and became one of the finest in the country. The football program is going up and up. The basketball program has always been uh, number one. And you're playing in a tough conference, a man coach conference. And the football program is bringing in money now, and uh, you're going to bowl games. People are starting to be real friendly, and things are just going up with training. The thing I'm sad about is my last year. So when I first come here, we were at five, five and one. It was like a great year. Then the next year we went eight and three. Then the following year we went eight and three. And this year we went eight two and one. But the fans really picked up. You know, they wanted to win a football team around here. I think, you know, in the metropolitan area, they had the Redskins and the Colts and stuff, but they never really had a, a major college football team that was winning. You know, we had it, but we were just losing and losing, and people didn't particularly appreciate that. But now the fact that, you know, we won and went to three bowl games, the fans are starting to pick up, and I um, really think next year, you know, is the team they should have, and uh, possibly of going to four state bowl games that uh, you know, it's really going to be an uh, electric atmosphere in you know, the College Park area. Bowl games are postseason fruits of victory when prestige teams meet to climax intersectional rivalries. For Maryland, the bid to play in a bowl was their third consecutive postseason invitation. The return to Jacksonville also marked the third time the Terrapins had been extended a Gator Bowl opportunity. Jerry Claiborne and his staff stressed that even though the game with Florida was to be taken seriously, the trip meant a time to relax and have some fun. After five months of hard work resulting in the superior 1975 season, the Terrapin players made the most of their opportunity. Senior tailback Ricky Jennings, in his own with it way, describes how everything came together at Maryland. Maryland has a fantastic social life. Uh, whenever you say social life, I look at the women. <laughs> 40,000 people on campus seven to one odds, women to men, so Maryland has a fantastic social life. Maryland has always been known for its academic standards, and uh, that was one of the main reasons I came. Uh, I knew if I graduated with a degree from Maryland University, I could stand up against any other degree in the country. Coach Claiborne, he came to Maryland with a winning attitude in 1972, and he gave that same attitude to his players. And 
We've been working together, believing in ourselves and believing in him, and we've put that together and we've added it up to three successful winning seasons. The Gator Bowl is definitely the highlight of my career. I've been playing football at Maryland for four years, and without a doubt, this is the biggest game of my life. I think after three winning seasons, this is the high point where the team has been working for the whole time we've been together. Over 64,000 football devotees crammed the Gator Bowl to watch the universities of Maryland and Florida collide on a Monday football night. Floridians honed to a near-white heat by the success of their high-scoring Gators were matched by the red-clad hordes of Maryland fans who had watched with equal pride as the Terrapins rolled to another Atlantic Coast Conference crown and high national ranking. Pre-game analysts made Florida the favorite in this prestige-laden game, which has become one of the great postseason extravaganzas. The game grew unique national television, radio, and press coverage. The Terrapin players have been in Florida for a week prior to kickoff, and with his touch intact, Jerry Claiborne and staff honed the Maryland offensive and defensive units to a state of near perfection in their game preparation. Then it was kickoff time, and the nation looked in. A fine mist began to fall as the Terrapins unleashed their finest overall effort of the year. First period, Terrapin quarterback Larry Dick nailed Tim Wilson for 15 yards and a first down. After a brilliant interception by Kevin Benson, tailback Ricky Jennings moves further into Florida territory with his 12-yard rush. The Terrapins move to the game's first score. Larry Dick searches for and finds Kim Hoover deep in the Florida end zone for this 19-yard payoff strike. On defense, Maryland completely controlled Florida at the line of scrimmage. Linebacker Mike Miller drops the Gator quarterback for a loss. Maryland cornerback Mike Selinski majors in law enforcement. When Florida quarterback Don Gaffney tries this aerial, Selinski arrests the intruding ball and returns deep into Florida territory. Maryland made the most of frequent Florida turnovers. Here, Ricky Jennings shoots outside for another 12-yard pickup. Strong-legged Mike Sochko adds the three important points with this 20-yard field goal. Terrapin pressure on Florida quarterbacks was incredible. Ralph Fisher corners Gaffney again for an unlucky 11-yard Gator loss. Maryland's dynamite offense was led by freshman tailback Steve Atkins, who had a brilliant night, rolling up well over 100 yards. Atkins picks up 29 yards on this burst alone. At 225 pounds, Atkins is an open field tear. Here he takes Larry Dick's screen toss and speeds for 22 more yards. Mike Sochko had another strong game. He closes off the scoring with his 27-yard field goal. It's 13 to nothing, Maryland. The Terrapin defense was physically awesome. Just ask Florida's Jimmy Fisher being caught and dropped for an unlucky 13-yard sack. Maryland preserved the shutout with ease. As the clock winds down, the Terrapin emotional tempo builds to a roar as the Terrapins keep their undefeated Gator Bowl record intact. The 31st Gator Bowl Championship belongs in College Park.